Hey everybody, Chris Bryant here. Very glad to be back with you today for this CCNA and CSENT video lab. And we call this one, Do I Really Need to Know This? And expletive deleted, fill in whatever word you want. Uh, part two. If you missed part one, don't worry about it because I'm going to remind you of that really quickly here at the beginning and a little bit of a conversation here before we hit the lab. Because this happens to everybody. It happened to me when I began my networking studies. It's going to happen to you if it hasn't already at least once. You know, you're studying something and maybe it's a little bit dry and there's some memorization involved and maybe you don't have a background in networking yet, which is fine because that the first time this happened to me, I didn't have a background in networking. I'm not one of these people who pretends that they were born with all this knowledge. So we all start somewhere and boy, I remember when I was studying the IPX SPX networking model. And this video is not about networking models, but the first one in the series was because I would look at this and it just looked like a jigsaw puzzle. They've, they've kind of uh, redone it a little bit so it maps to the OSI and TCP networking model, TCP IP networking models. But man, you know, and of course I'm like you in that I had work and I had a real life and I couldn't just study all the time and you're at the library studying at night. And I remember just looking at this thing, it was just like a jigsaw puzzle and I hadn't heard of 90% of the topics and just thinking, yeah, no, I really need to know this crap. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just being very honest with you. That's exactly what I called it. As it turns out, the knowledge I was picking up there did help me. So I like to remind people, especially if you're relatively new to this, that yeah, sometimes some of this might be a little dry or even not dry, but you just think, am I really going to use this? And this is one of those moments where you really do need to know this. And I'm going to show you why, a real world application for it. And we're going to do this on a real live router. As you can see, what I've already done here is sent a ping to 10.1.1. And actually, give me just a moment and I will... Can we adjust that up one without blowing the whole thing up? Let's see. Yep, let's blow that up a little bit. So we're pinging 10.1.1.1 here. And you can see the line type escape sequence to a board and sending five 100 byte ICMP echoes. Good defaults to know for your exam. The timeout is two seconds. I know it's going off a little off your screen, but that's okay. Well, that address is not pingable from this particular router. So I got five dots and of course that took about 10 seconds, right? Success rate 0%. Well, one of the things that I mentioned in my video boot camp online, my online course, a couple of times is that you need to know what this escape sequence is because they don't tell you and once in a while it could really come in handy. But I do get asked, and it's a fair question, I get asked in the course, I get asked in Twitter on occasion, you know, why, why am I ever going to need to abort a ping? You know, it only lasts 10 seconds anyway, can't you just wait for it? Uh, and I used to think that exact same thing. Now, again, let's just send that ping to 10111 again. I'll go ahead and type it out. So you're sitting there pinging an address, and while I'm big on time management, making every minute count, and et cetera, you're looking at this and you're just thinking, well, you know, I didn't really burn a whole lot of time there. But there are a couple of other times when you really want to know what this is. It's not just something to know for the exam. One is a trace route. If you were sending trace route, now, is that going to work? Yep. Because remember, trace route on a Cisco router, it's the full the full word, trace route. So right now, it says type escape sequence to abort tracing the route to 101. And since it really doesn't even have anywhere to begin tracing it, we're starting to get these timeouts. And that's fine, except we're going to get 30 rows of them. And true story, I was using this once, and... Uh, someone was behind me <laughs> watching me and I was thinking this was very early in my networking career and I didn't know what the escape sequence was. None of the study guys even mentioned it at the time. Uh, and I believe it was the vice president of the bank I was working for at the time. And I'm just watching, watching these rows intently and thinking, I got 25 rows to go. And finally, about row 10, he asked, is it supposed to be doing that? <laughs> so uh, I think I said yes. But anyway, this is a real world application for this particular situation. And what you're going to do is what I just did, which is control shift six twice. You don't need to be a speed demon about it, but once you practice it, you'll do it without even thinking. Again, it's control shift six and you just do it back to back. So that's one good time that you'll really want to know how to use this, uh, this particular command, this particular keystroke. And what is another one? 
that you might want to use. Well, we have something called an extended ping, and we're going to use that right now just by using the word ping and hitting enter. And you have to be in privilege exec mode to run this one. So it's going to ask for my protocol IP, my target IP address. Now, I may be troubleshooting by myself one night and I want to send a string of pings out to a particular address. Uh, another great use for this, and you'll run into this later in your studies, it's nothing that you're going to have to do uh, for your CSENT or your CCNA, but what you might want to do one day is simulate or create a multicasting stream because you're going to have multicast groups that you work with later in your studies, you know, like the multicast routing protocols that EIGRP uses 224.0010, uh, et cetera. But you might want to create a stream for another address. And the only real way to do that, or the easiest way to do it, is just to say here, okay, I'm going to ping a multicast address, a target address, and I'm going to send, you know, 10,000 pings. But let's just say, or also, let's say that I was typing this in and I meant to put 100 111. And you just go about your merry way and you say, okay, I want uh, 100,000 pings, and I want them at the usual size, and I want them five seconds apart, and I don't want extended commands, I don't want anything else. And just about this time you realize, oh man, I really meant to put 100 111. And you really don't want to sit here and watch 100,000 pings go out every five seconds. That's going to take a long time. So that's when you want to use your handy little Control-Shift-6 command. So I know when you get to the keystrokes in your studies, you know, and I'm, I'm very honest about that in my, my uh, online course as well, I don't use a ton of those commands like moving the cursor to the beginning of the line, moving it to the back, moving it to the middle, moving it one character. I use one or two of them, but you need to know for the exam. But this is one that you are definitely going to want to use for your exams and you will be astonished how often it comes up in lab work and also in real life networking. So it's definitely a good keystroke to know. Just a moment of your time, if you will, our new website is launching in early, early, early April 2014 and I look forward to having you out there. Also, thanks for making my books on Amazon such a huge success. My CCNA success series, ICND 1 and 2, plus there's another book, uh, Binary Math and Subnetting, which is in the ICND 1 and 2 books. Don't worry, it's just 150 additional practice questions. Uh, I am often asked two questions about these. I want to address them real quickly right here. First off, you don't need a Kindle to read these. Uh, your phone, your smartphone likely has a Kindle app, but if you don't have one or you don't even have a phone, you can read them on just about anything with these free Kindle apps that you can get out at Amazon. And also, for those of you taking the one exam path, I'm asked, you know, do you have a single CCNA book? I don't because the files were so big that we were looking at a thousand pages of material. The file was huge. We didn't want to worry that with a download. So it, it is split in half. If you're going after the one exam, you'll want to pick up my ICND 1 and 2. Considering it's less than 20 bucks, and I see plenty of Kindle books for 40 bucks out there, uh, it's still an outstanding bargain. I do hope you'll check out the new website in April. And thanks again for making my books on Amazon such a huge success. I am truly humbled and very appreciative. I'm Chris Bryant, and I'll see you right here very soon. Thanks for making TBA part of your CCNA success story.